Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be taking a look at the DJI Mavic Mini Drone. I've been wanting a drone for a while now and I finally decided to get one. I'm going to be using this for personal use and also work use for my day job. I just figured I'd show you uh, what the drone is all about and just kind of hit the highlights of it. So I got the Mavic Mini Fly More combo, which gives you a little bit more than just the basic drone package. With the basic drone package, you're gonna get the drone, a battery, the controller, and a charger, and that's about it. With the Fly More, you get this case, which is nice. You get the drone, obviously. You get a couple extra chargers. You get the charging pack like you see here. You get the remote that you see here. You also get some spare blades and screws and things like that. It also comes with a set of blade guards. I don't have them pictured here. I actually have them still in the box. I haven't used them yet. More or less, this is what it gives you in that package. So it's a little more fulfilling. You get multiple batteries that you can keep charged at once. Make it so you can keep flying all the time. So first, let's take a look at the drone. Here is the drone. And it's nice because it folds up into a small little package here when not in use. So you can just basically put it right in here instead of like a fixed wing drone where the footprint is the limiting factor on storage. With this, you just unfold the wings and it's as easy as that. And they are kind of spring loaded so they snap back into place. So this also comes with a gimbal protector. That's this piece right here. This just protects the camera gimbal when not in use. You have to take it off when you're flying, obviously, so that it can move freely, but there is the camera. But uh, it's a pretty neat little drone. I've gotten some cool shots with it, and it's definitely gonna help me with my job to capture some job site footage of some of the projects that I work on. It'll be cool to play around with in my spare time to check out some properties and that is the drone. This is the remote control. You basically just open this up and it comes with a handful of different cables that you use to hook up to your phone. So this is the iPhone connector. It comes with a USB-C connector and a USB mini connector as well, I believe. You can pretty much connect it to any modern iPhone or Android device these days. So you just basically plug the coordinating plug that you have on here and then you lock your phone into this spot right here, plug it in, and you're good to go. Now it does have these two antennas on the top here that you unfold when you're flying. And then it has built-in storage for the joysticks that you just need to pull out and screw into place when you're ready to fly. And it feels just like an Xbox controller or something. There's a button over here. This is the return to home button. This is the power button. This is the camera shot button and this is the record video button. And there's also a tilt wheel here on the back. This controls the angle of the gimbal on the camera when you're flying, so you can tilt up and down. And then basically, these are just the flying controls and there's some built-in preset controls in the app that you can uh, customize. I've played around with them a little bit till I found one that I thought was the best. So depending on your preference, you can have this be up and down and turn the drone, and then this will be like move forward, move backwards, and strafe right and strafe left. You can find the best setting that is best for you. There's a handful of them in there, like I said. The way you charge this is just through the side port here. You remove that port, and then you use a uh, micro USB just like that. Plug it in the wall with a USB plug like the one that's included. So that's the remote. This is the charger. It is a three port charging unit, which is kind of nice. The other battery I have is actually still in here. So these are the batteries. They are 2400 um, mAh batteries. So they, they do last pretty long. The battery life they say is up to 30 minutes fly time, which I haven't gotten 30 minutes yet, but I've gotten probably 25 minutes, which is pretty good considering, you know, it's just a little tiny battery up there flying around. Pretty neat. So it doesn't actually charge all three batteries at once. Not a big deal. It will just charge one at a time and then move on to the next lowest. This doubles as a charging pack. So if you have all your batteries fully charged, you can actually plug a, a USB device into here and charge it off of this. And this is how you charge the battery pack itself. You just take the cord that's included and plug it in there and then use the other side of the power block and plug it into a wall. There is a feature that lets you see the battery charge life of the batteries. So you can see these two are full and this one here is down to one bar. So the way the batteries get installed on the drone is just through this back door here. You open it up, then you can release one of the batteries, just push in the little tab, pull the battery out, and then 
drop it in. On the bottom of the drone, there's this button here that will also indicate the battery life. You can also charge the battery one at a time through this charge port right here. And that's how you would charge it if you didn't have the power block. Also included is a little screwdriver that you can use to replace blades, screws, and things like that if you ever needed to. So the weight of this drone is 249 grams, which gets you underneath the FAA regulations to register. Like I said before, up to 30 minutes fly time. I have not gotten 30 minutes, but a good 25 minutes per battery is more than enough for me. It says it has an operating distance of up to 4,000 meters, which is roughly two and a half miles. Now I haven't taken it out that far yet, but I have flown it around my neighborhood. It was fine pretty much the entire time. I don't know if I'll ever take it out to the maximum distance, but can't say that it is limited by line of sight typically. If you lose line of sight from the remote control antennas to the drone, there's gonna be some signal degradation from the drone to the remote control and it may become kind of hard to fly. If you do lose signal all together, I believe the drone will just return back to where it took off and you can just pick back up from where you left off. So these are lithium ion batteries, like I said, 2400 mAh. You use a proprietary app from the Apple Store or Android made by DJI. It's called the DJI Fly app. It connects with your phone and that's how you download the pictures off of the drone to your device. Now the SD card is not sold with the drone. You have to buy it separately. It's just a simple micro SD card that you see here. I'm using a SanDisk 128 gigabyte card and you just leave that in there so when you're flying the drone and you're recording or you're taking pictures, all of that's stored locally on the drone. But through the app, you can transfer them from the drone to your phone and then you can do what you like with them. The camera is a 12 megapixel camera. It has a three gimbal axis on there so it shoots really, really stable video and pictures. I mean, it's almost like you know a big picture movie taking a long cinematic shot. It's really, really cool. The field of view of the camera is 83 degrees so it's not quite like a fisheye it's, but it's pretty wide so I mean, it does a pretty good job. I'd compare it to like a, just a normal camera almost field of view wise. It'll take four, three or 16, nine still images. You can adjust that in the app. It'll take still shots one at a time or you can even set it up to do it on an interval. And I believe there's also a timed uh, photo in there as well. So if you're taking a group photo and you wanna make sure everyone's in the right spot, you can set it up as a timer. The video is 2.7K. It'll shoot 2.7K in 25 or 30 FPS. You can adjust that in the app itself, or it'll shoot 1080p in 25, 30, 50, or 60 FPS. The output of the photos are JPEGs, and the output of the videos are MP4s. Now, it also has a couple different flight modes that you can use while you're flying it. There's the P mode, which is basically the normal fly mode, and that'll give you the best functionality of speed and battery life. Um, then there's also the S mode, which is sport mode. This will juice up the blades and it'll fly around really, really fast at the expense of battery. You're not gonna get the full 25, 30 minutes of battery time when you're using sport mode. I usually only use sport mode when I'm returning to me in a hurry. There's also C mode, which is for cinematic. That slows the speed of the drone down way, way low and it slows the speed of the gimbal as well. And it allows you to take some really, really smooth, clean cinematic shots while you're flying around. It's actually a really cool feature. I use that one a lot when I'm taking pictures of a job site or something like that. You can switch through those on the fly in the app while you're flying, literally. Obviously you can just fly it around manually using the remote, um, but then there's also some built-in like automatic fly modes that are kind of neat. So they're called quick shots in the app and there's four of them. There's Drony, Rocket, Helix, and Circle. Drony will start at an object and then zoom back out of the way at an angle. Rocket will start at an object and shoot straight up from it. Helix will start at an object and slowly helix its way up and out away from the object. Circle will circle the object 360 degrees and it'll be taking a video the entire time while it's doing any one of these functions. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with the drone. I've been getting some neat shots. It's very versatile. It's gonna help me track progress at job sites for my job. And it's also gonna be something fun to play with on the weekends or uh, take some pictures of property or my house or just go out and fly. It's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. You can also fly this drone inside. Now, I wouldn't recommend it until you're pretty proficient with the controls, but it can be done. There is the startup function and then just throttle up and it'll go.
So that's it for the drone introduction. Hopefully I can introduce this on the YouTube channel some more and get some cool stuff uh, filmed for my YouTube channel. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Love it if you subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos. Later.